Welcome everyone to another video for Midian Gaming. We are continuing the series with the jumpstart into Vampire the Eternal Struggle. Today we are looking at the Toreador deck. Yep. All right. So with that, if you are looking to get jumpstarted and start into Vampire the Eternal Struggle, I need you to find that time to sit down with me because this is not a rushed video. We're going to go right through this deck with my ideas in regards to how to make it better and how to bring it up to a standard where it gets to about 90 cards, yeah? All right, so once you've found the time, let's start this video. I'll switch the screen and we'll get started. All right, we are back on the Amaranth screen, okay? And we're gonna go through the Vampires first, just like I did in the last video with the Nosferatu. The top three to four Vampires um, are the ones that you're going to want to bring out in this deck. Once again, apologies, there's no pictures that show up within Amaranth for the Vampires, but the first one is Catalina Vega. Camarilla Prince with plus one bleed. Straight off from the bat, I'm gonna say it, that boats and bleeding are very important in this deck. It's all it does, does nothing else. And the abilities that we're looking for in these decks is this one, Celerity, and this one, Presence. The eye is in there, but we don't actually use it. And I thought about putting cards in for the eye, Catalina is the only one that has it at Superior, so we're going to forego it totally. And all we're looking at is Presence as our major thing that we're going to be looking at, and Celerity as a little bit of defense, okay? But Camarilla Prince plus one bleed has everything that we want this vampire to be, and everything is going to be a step down from this one, okay? So we've got Flavio next, Camarilla Prince, once each combat and strike dodge, pretty important. We're gonna be using Flavio in those instances where we're not sure whether they can block or not, and we're taking it with the chance that we'll be able to strike dodge. Now, if you are coming up against some Immortal Grapple decks, this is gonna be a problem because won't be able to dodge, can only do a hand strike. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at the table it's not just what's in front of you and what you've got in your deck you have to make those decisions about what happens on a table who is where if you're surrounded by combat decks that could be good or if there's an immortal grapple deck right there it's, it's a bad thing yeah we're gonna have to look at other means to get stuff out or maybe flavials mainly used for the prince boats yeah now, I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Makok Kelly, <laughs> uh, Prince of Cape Town. It's just another prince with advanced presence is what we're looking at. So all three of them have advanced presence. And then we've got to Tamosius, uh, has advanced presence and advanced celerity. So very much in there for that. But the first three vampires, there's two of. If you were going to look at changing the vampires up, you might see the average of these you've got an eight cap a seven cap and a six cap if you're putting in more, more copies than them the average of your vampire cost is going to go up now there are other ways to tackle this we could add in extra action cards to actually bring that level down a bit but for now we're just going to stick with it but i will say that if you are going to up the numbers, bring Catalina up to about four. You, you won't see four in the opening crypt. Uh, if you want to be careful, then three. Flavial, maybe to three. And Mikokheli, maybe to three as well. Yep, that means you're dunking three other vampires from this. Probably Nick Sicko and Mincio uh, have to go in that respect. Brett Striker is a very good vampire for you because has advanced in both of the abilities that you're going to use and he's only a four cap so you want to keep uh brett striker and must maybe forego massimo in this respect brett striker is perfect for this deck and add a four cap as well all right let's go on to the other stage where the library cards are where we've got 13 cards that we can fill out a deck now we'll say straight off the bat this is an extremely good deck 
based on by itself with 77 cards and um, mix up the vampires a little bit by including maybe another Catalina Vega in there. The deck itself is very solid. So let's go through the cards to see what makes it solid, whether we would take anything out, and then go over my ideas on what to add, yeah? All right. So, Art Museum. <clears throat> so, Art Museum, all these are master cards. Locked during your influence phase to add one blood to a Torridor in your uncontrolled region. Straight off the bat, this is giving you an idea of where this deck is going to go. It is going to be a boat deck. It's going to be a bloat deck. It does not want combat. It will bleed when it has to, but it's going to bloat like crazy and then come over with a range of vampires and really lay the smack down in regards to your blood pool. So when you are against this deck, you really need to be managing your pool, understanding that this deck can just put a bunch of stuff on a table and then come across and quite hard. You might only have one turn to prepare for it. Not much. Creepshow Casino, a personal favorite of mine. It is a little bit expensive at two, but it gives plus one stealth on non-directed actions. And this deck is full of non-directed actions. If it ain't bleeding, it's going to be all undirected and it does it well. So having the extra stealth on this is yeah, very, very good. And this is one of the cards that I would consider putting an, a second copy of, just to make sure I got it out in the deck as I'm taking the deck up closer. You know what? <clears throat> If this deck stayed at the this low amount of 77 cards, I wouldn't mind taking it to 78 just to get the percentage of the Creepshow Casino up. That's how important I think this card is to the deck. Listen, the, the Palace of Versailles. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice. Jeez. <laughs> right, during the referendum of a political action, you may lock this card to give one additional vote to each ready titled Camarilla Vampire you control. This is fantastic. If you've got three vampires out, all Camarilla princes who have got two votes each, all of a sudden they've gained one vote on each one, another three to the table. That is huge. It's amazing. So don't underestimate this card. If you can sudden reversal it, do it. You don't want their votes going off, especially if you've got a, lo a vote lock on the table with other people on the table as well. If you allow this deck to get the votes, it's going to go crazy and it's going to be hard to stop. Society Hunting Ground, probably another one that potentially look at two for in the deck, taking out the 79 cards. Obviously gives a blood to a vampire you control um, during your untap phase. Remember, this is going to bloat. You're going to have abilities to take blood off vampires or your vampires are going to use to attain more pool for you and you are just going to get that up your predator is going to be bleeding you like crazy but you know what most likely they won't be able to bleed you hard enough and you'll be like i'll take the bleed i'll take the bleed i'll take the bleed you'll be laughing you know they might bleed you for three you'll be gaining three or even six or even more during the turn you don't care just as long as your vampires are fine they're not attacked they're not getting into combat and yeah fantastic it's going to take a very heavy bleed to bleed this deck out if it gets going okay torridor grand ball now this is a pretty neat card choose two ready torridor you control the first Torridor's non-bleed actions cannot be blocked. This is deadly. Another card which will probably have two off, taking us up to, I think, 80 cards now, okay? Tor the second Torridor does not unlock as normal during the unlock phase. Lock the second Torridor. Any minion may burn this card as a D action, which is causing them to take a special action and not do what they're doing in order to come across. And if you've got two of these in the deck and you pull out a second one, it's gonna become really annoying, not only to your predator and prey, but possibly to the other people at the table who are seeing this and going, oh my goodness. So be careful if you're playing this deck, don't start your enemies too quick, yeah? Don't have people worried about you. Maybe it's more viable just to be sitting back and building up, waiting for someone else to be a threat and for people to start looking at them and then just go boom 
hit the table with what you've got and then just start going it might be too late for the rest of the table okay <laughs> all right villain great card for this and it is one way telling you exactly what the deck wants you to be doing okay so put this on a vampire you control who has any amount of blood and move two to five blood from that vampire to your pool so minion top tap costs an additional pool to play on this vampire as does um another villain on this vampire so all of a sudden it's telling you we're taking uh, blood of vampires so stuff like that hunting ground is pretty important bringing that one blood back okay all right let us start going into what the deck does actions now you've got six of these uh yeah six of these in the deck bleed with plus one but at advance which your a lot of your vampires do have add two blood to a younger vampire in your uncontrolled region so don't make the mistake to start locking a vampire without understanding what vampires you've got and you know what it might be worth using one of your all four of your transfers and one pull in order to get more vampires out because this card is what's setting up your bloat action to get more stuff out in order to set your, your board up and just go straight for a, a massive bleed later on okay so it's had a plus one stealth action, add two blood to a younger vampire in your uncontrolled region. During your transfer phase, if you're not giving it up to bring a vampire out, you use your four actions to take those two blood off and put it there. Or use stuff like this to bring out your other vampires, yeah? And that way you're not costing your pool. This is fantastic card. You can see that it's got six in the deck. And if you were increasing deck numbers, I would take this to eight, okay? so. At the moment, we're sitting at about 82 cards. Haven't really taken anything out. Yeah, so action modifiers. Now, all of these are based most likely on presence. So let's take a look at them and get a great idea as to where we're going with this. All right. At minor, it's plus one bleed with an additional plus one bleed. If this vampire is a Toreador or plus two bleed with an additional plus one bleed if this vampire is a total. So effectively getting a two or three bleed from this card for the cost of one blood from the vampire. Wow, you know? And if you've got your table set up with quite a few things on the table and they come across, each one could be doing air revelation. Ooh, that's, that's scary, yeah? As an opponent, you hope that you've got enough bounce in your hand to actually send that across. Bewitching oration. This vampire gains plus two or at, at plus four at advanced, yeah? So straight away, the votes are going to be coming up on the table and this deck is wanted to be getting the votes through. While it's taking those actions and if it's looking to be blocked, unlock this acting minion and the action ends unsuccessfully. The minion cannot perform the same action again this turn. However, other minions can perform the same action this turn. Vampire can do another action. It can bleed. It can call another type of vote. It can um, do another uh, Enchant Kindred if it didn't do it on the first attempt. So there's so many things. Do be aware that if you do have the change of target in hand, maybe you want to be doing an ability just to get the opponents to react. Just so you can use change of target and do the particular action that you were really wanting to do and that you forced them to use cards against something that wasn't as important so maybe enchant kindred is something i wanted to really get off so maybe i went and called some random vote just to get them to stop it so i could do an enchant kindred because that was my real aim to do that yeah perfect paragon this vampire gets plus three votes and allies and younger vampires get neg one intercept a pretty useful card once again those plus three votes wow and voter captivation this is all where it comes in all these extra votes the acting vampire gains x blood from the blood bank where x is the number of votes by which the referendum passed you've got a six seven or eight cat vampire on the table you have gone and you've gone and played villain you've taken five blood off that vampire into your pool that vampire then with creep show casino goes and casts a boat at plus two intercept they get the boats on the table they're gaining blood 
It's called Consanguinous Boon. We're going to be coming up against it or coming up with it soon. They do a breaching oration to gain another plus four votes, let's just say. They maybe even get a perfect paragon out there and get another plus three votes. They're up by about plus seven on the vote count. Then they do a voter captivation. Look at that. So the vampire gains X blood from the blood bank where X is the number of votes by which a referendum passed and that advance as above, but move two of those blood counters to your pool instead of the vampire. So your vampire is back up to full and you're moving two. <laughs> you're moving two of that pool to, or two of that blood to your pool. So yeah, it's this, this deck really bloats. It's fantastic. And if you like that type of control type deck that um, you're going to be going nuts on with a bit of um, rush, then or rush in regards to the opponent's pull, then maybe this is the deck for you. It is crazy deck. And when I see it hit the table, I warn everyone, make sure that doesn't get going. As soon as we start seeing actions, they need to be blocked. We need to hold the deck up a little bit or punish it. Resist Earth's Grasp, okay? This is the only time that I see Celerity being used. You can either use it for plus one stealth at advanced or press or maneuver with one optional press. So in combat, if you're up against the uh, grapple decks, you want to be using this at the minor. You want to get to that maneuver and maneuver it out to long. And you want to use the optional press to stop combat. So that is a real concern. If they're coming out with a combat deck and they want to get close, you move to far. All right, they might throw something at you like a throne gate or a sewer lid. You hopefully should survive something like that. Then they go to press to continue combat. You've got that optional press to stop it. So they're going to need a second press in order to keep that combat going. So it's a little bit of protection. This is the reason why it's in there. Are there better options? Look, at the end of the day, you've got eight of these in your deck from the base deck and you don't want your vampires in combat. So I think it's enough. Go with it. See how you go. Scalpel time. This is great. Choose a vampire who has cast votes or ballots in this referendum. The chosen vampire is locked and abstains. As above, and the vampire burns one blood if you've got both abilities at advance. You're only using it for the basic presence and celerity. And it increases your votes in order to play the voter captivation as well as to get the vote off. Yep. Very good. If I was coming up against or I knew I was coming up against another vote deck, I'd probably put in delaying tactics, which we'll go through in a moment. All right, the political actions, consanguinous boom, choose a clan, successful referendum means each Methusa gains one pool for each vampire of the chosen clan they control. So you want as many Torridor on the table as possible. Yep. Kind resources contested, allocate four points among two or more Methuselahs. Successful referendum means each Methuselah burns one pool for each point allocated. Now, if you are just doing this to get a voter cap off, you need to make people around the table want to agree with this. So you might help another Methuselah out with a vote like this, just so you can sneakily get off the voter captivation and get pulled yourself. This is not always used to hurt your prey and predator. So just keep that in mind. Parity shift. Choose a Methuselah who has more pull than you do and allocate three of their pull between one or more of the other Methuselahs. All right. Another chance to get something off and help, help other people help you get what you want yeah they may not they might not see the end game of what's happening but as long as they're getting a boon from you in this regard you know why not they just might throw you some votes to help you along you've always got to have the card in your hand there'll be people say no don't like bring the votes closer together and that something like this you might not even care if it gets off or not but it is interesting for the political stand of the table. In effect, parity shift being a four of, depends how you want to use it. If you're going for the pure attack and you think you've got the table, then yeah. Otherwise you can swap the cards out for other things. You've got total Justicar in there. 
Choose a ready Torridor. If this referendum is successful, put this card on the chosen Torridor to represent the unique Camarilla title of Torridor Justicar. Um, in this referendum, each Torridor gets one extra vote. How great is that? So you're lining up your voter cap for something like this. And once this goes on a Torridor, I believe Justicar is three votes. So they get three votes instead of the one. So could you imagine you've got your princes on the table and then you bring out Brett Stryker and make him Torridor Justicar. Fantastic, yeah? All right. We're getting right to the end. More combat cards. We've got our uh, combat ends, and as above, and unlock this vampire before combat ends. Useless against the grapple decks, fantastic against every other deck that gets you into combat because you get to untap at the uh, superior. And second domain tradition, you've got four of these plus two intercept, only usable by a locked prince or justica. Even if intercept is not yet needed, to burn one blood to unlock and attempt to block with plus two intercept. Now they do have four in the deck. I think it's enough, even if we're going to take the numbers up. Mainly because you don't want to be getting into combat. This is a last resort effort or you want to stop your prey or predator from doing something. Okay, I wouldn't use it to stop normal bleeds. And even if someone comes through and... If your hand's set up to bloat like crazy and it's dangerous to stop this one bleed coming across and they're going to bleed before let's just say maybe you want to let it through and keep these cards for where they matter at the end of the day you might be going so good that you don't care about blocking you might even uh, chuck this away in regards to talking about that throwing things away Look, we're up to about 82 cards. We can put eight more if we really want to. So let's go to the sites. This is Midian Gaming. I've brought up uh, the page where let's just get back to the singles. Now, remember, I've got the crypt cards and I've got library cards. Click on the library cards. What are we going to look at? Maybe actions, okay? I've got a card in mind that I think will be great for this deck. Now, while you are getting pulled down to the lower vampires and getting them out through other actions, there are other ones that we can be doing. So remember, let's put this to about three across. Let's go down. We haven't put it to 100, but I don't think I need to in this. Computer hacking, always good. You won't need it for this deck. All right, let me get to it. The Embrace. Let's take a quick view at this. Come on, come on. Oh, look at that, 45 in stock. Very good. Put this card in play it becomes a one capacity non-unique vampire of the same clan as a sect as the acting vampire and must hunt this turn. Okay, so we are getting more Toridor, Camarilla Toridors onto the table. A great thing when we're going for Consanguinous Boon and Voter Captivation, yeah? Very good. Let's just get back to that. So, just so Consanguinous Boon... Um, gains one pull for each vampire of the chosen clan they control. And remember, we've got um, up here, you've got that voter cap, which you're gaining the vampire gains X pull. So if you're able to get these things on, fantastic. We had the Palace of Versailles. Um, no, that was the one additional vote. Where was the total? The total grand ball was that, that, you know what I'm thinking? ankle cog as well but let's just get back to this all right so the embrace very good for getting more vamps on the table it works well with the deck i don't know why it's not in the actual deck itself but more chance to actually buy some more of these cards to actually fill out the deck and maybe change it a little bit with the way it's going just to get more vamps out if you're looking at everything else you know you've got enchant kindred trance nothing really else needed from here that is flying off the bat you've got legal manipulations very good to get that plus two bleed if you are after that but let's go straight back up to the top i'll click on library cards again we've got plenty of political actions well action modifiers mm, let's take a look at the action modifiers shall we uh, put it into about three here. Now remember, we're looking for abilities 
that either have Toradol here or nothing. Look at this ankle cog. Let's take a look. Now we can't use it. Requires a capacity of 10 or more, a vampire with 10 or more. So we can't use it. So I was incorrect with that one. As we go down further, we see abilities being there to use. There's two separate abilities on each of these. Momentary delay uh, requires a vampire above seven. So we're not really going to worry about that. There's Perfect Paragon, such an awesome card for this deck. And nothing in action modifies. So we're doing pretty good so far. This, this deck has no equipment. We do have reactions though. One thing this deck was a bit low on was reactions. Now, if we look here, we've got actions, action modifiers, and that's because it doesn't really want to do much on the reaction front. It does have this second tradition as its reaction. Now, if we needed to, normally you would want reactions so you could bounce bleeds, and we can do that with this deck. But we need the advance it's too much hassle to try and get it up to speed in regards to using the eye in that respect one thing i would potentially look at is delaying tactics especially if you've got another a vote deck on the table that is competing against you maybe you want to stuff up their votes especially if they're going against you with delaying tactics you know one or even two of these in the deck is not a bad thing you get to throw it out at the end of your phase if you're not using it or you see that the table has changed but if something happens and there are boats in this game that are really going to hurt you there is a boat that will um give you one damage from your pool for each minion you control okay so if you can delay something like that that would be you know a good thing and your vampires aren't very high either you do have an eight if you get them out let's take a look at this yeah catalina is an eight but there are also boats that say pick a vampire you control then minus this amount and take damage or gain pull for the remainder so if they're able to dunk your Catalina or your uh, Flavio and you've only got low vampires, there's another way that they can hit you. What a great chance it would be if something wants to hit the table, they're all confident and you do a delaying tactics. It's just too good to pass up. So if you are going to 90 cards, I would recommend throwing in two of these, bringing you to 84. We might be at around about 85 or 86. Let's just say we've got about four more cards to play with at this point. Mind you, I haven't taken anything out of this deck, and I did say from the start it was a very good deck. I could if I really wanted to try. I don't think it's necessary. In regards to another reaction on the QV, will allow you to act as if you were untapped and react to other vamps. You know what? If it was me, I, and I had to get the if I had to get the deck up to ninety, I'd probably put four of these in as well, just to take that up to the. Uh, 90 cards Now let's see if there is one other thing that I may have missed in this so we've gone to reactions I said it was a little poor in that regard. We're not going to go with any allies or retainers The deck is quite good as it is and we'll, we'd be muddying the waters too much from its main objective If we were getting that we're spending time doing that when we're not doing something else Allies and retainers look good. They are, are fantastic but you need to have that strategy towards what they're doing. They need to improve what you do best. And at the moment, what you do best is you bloat and then you come over for some big bleeds and there's too many vampires to stop that. If you're just going to spend time with building up individual vampires into these things that are really not warranted, you're not you're not really going to do what this deck was made for. Now, if you've got an idea for other Toreador decks, then maybe that's the way to go. You know, there are Toreador gun decks. There's a whole range of things that you can do with the Toreador. They've got some fantastic abilities. They can intercept. They can go into combat. This deck is not made for them, though. <laughs> this deck has a very particular purpose. So pretty much... My view is if you are going to be true to the deck and just want to make it that little bit more con contesting, I wouldn't go with the allies and retainers just yet. No events at this moment, probably no combat, and you're at the master cards. Was there any other master card that I'd put in? Look at that, you got Aching Beauty. What a fantastic card for the total. 
Put this card on Torador. If this Torador is blocked, the blocking minions controller burns one pool before the block resolution. Just to mess with them. But once again, it takes us away. We're spending that two pool, which we could be spending somewhere else. So no Anarch Troublemaker. We've already got the art museums in there. We're not doing Asher Tablet deck. The Barons. The Barons is something that I would potentially look at putting in there. Helps to get, move your cards along. Maybe the cards in your hand don't favor what you've got, or there's maybe you're looking for combat cards, or you don't need your combat cards that are sitting in hand. The Barons will either help you find those cards or lose those cards as you need it. Look, the Barons is a staple for just about any deck. I don't, I can't even really think of a reason why you wouldn't put in just about every deck. As we come across various decks, you know, that will be challenged, no doubt. In this deck, I think it fits as well. So if I had a place for the Barons, or even two Barons, I would place it. Probably one is enough for this deck, in my view. You've got Blood Dolls there. We're doing it with Villain. Blood Doll allows you to move it back to the Vampire, back and forward. You have to be prepared that you're just going to maybe lose younger Vampires. Just keep bringing them out. Yeah, hopefully they get destroyed and you can keep bringing them out. Channel 10, we're not looking to intercept. The Coven, uh, lock to add two blood to a ready Vampire control um, and then give it to your Predator. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Not a fan at all. And looking through the rest, look, some of these cards are pretty good. Look at that, Elder Library giving you a plus one hand size. Once again, who couldn't do with more cards in their hand, yeah? Maybe one Barons, one Elder Library. We're not going with Fame, Fear of Mecha, Frontal Assault, no. So that's really all it is. You know, Giant's Blood, it is a nice one, especially if you're ripping uh, blood off a vampire. But yeah so that's where we are with the deck let me just take us back to full screen now all right and that was Zorador deck hope you enjoyed it look in the comments put down anything i may have missed or your ideas on um how to make the deck better based on the cards that are currently available and do understand we are getting new cards coming out which is really exciting can't wait to be doing videos on them uh, if you liked the video, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. It really doesn't matter. And if you do enjoy the channel and want to support us, just click the subscribe button. It means a lot to us. and It's only a second of your time. See you all on the next video. Have a great one, guys. See you all.